First Sergeant Kemp here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters, and thank you for joining us in the workshop. Today we are going to be experimenting with using a modern piece of technology to solve a very old problem, deep cleaning the block on an 1859 Sharps. Now, the block on an 1859 Sharps is its beating heart. If it is fouled, it is dirty, it is grimy, it is not going to run, it's going to be... Um, prone to misfires, it's going to jam up with fouling. So we need to make sure that every time that we're done reenacting, that we really deep clean and give a lot of love to that block. Now we take it apart, we often boil it, we use all sorts of different uh, solvents and cleaners and pipe cleaners and Q-tips to make sure that we get into every single nook and cranny. But what about the stuff that we can't see. How do we know that we got everything out of that block? And what could using an ultrasonic cleaner tell us about what we're missing? But there are also people out there that wonder, did I get it all out? Because especially if you get a used rifle, for example, black powder fouling can harden and almost fool people into thinking that that's part of the block. I've seen it numerous times over the years, and then you just get at this, you know, giant chunk of caked on black powder that's sitting in the block and it breaks free, and surprise, the rifle works great again. But what happens if you also have a damaged, damaged or uh, frozen cleanout screw, and you haven't yet had a chance to get it over to a qualified gunsmith to remove, repair, and replace that item? Is there a way that you could still deep clean your block to help troubleshoot some of your, some of your firing issues or just to keep it maintained until you have an opportunity for a proper and thorough repair? That's where I wanted to try this bit of technology out. Now I've used ultrasonic cleaners before in the past, but I haven't used them to clean my 1859 sharps. Do I think you need an ultrasonic cleaner to clean your 1859 sharps? No. But in Company D, we have a lot of Sharps rifles, and we really want to make sure that we have every tool and trick at our disposal to make sure that our rifles are running uh, efficiently, they are running safely, and that they are going to be stored and well-maintained in between our events. This isn't any sort of special ultrasonic cleaner. I just went on Amazon and picked up one for, I want to say maybe this was $120 when I purchased it. Um, it seemed like it had good reviews and it had some uh, features and capacity requirements that I thought would fit well for other uses around my shop because I also do quite a bit of tool restoring. I do work on small gas engines and so being able to have something to stick a little carburetor into and kind of deep clean uh, old gas and residue out of that when I'm working on other projects. I thought this would be really handy. So this is uh, a nice little form factor that I, I found on Amazon. It comes with some pretty solid instructions and it comes with a temperature conversion chart. So that way you can translate from Celsius, which is what the machine is programmed for, and you can translate that into the corresponding freedom unit. So you have a nice opportunity to heat your, your cleaning um, medium. And in this case, I just have water from my shop sink in here a little below the level. And then I put my block and my cone as well as my clean out screw into a Ziploc bag with a little bit of super clean and some water. Super clean is a degreaser I use around my shop all the time. And by putting everything into a Ziploc bag, it really cuts down on my cleaning because I don't have to scrub and rinse this um, tank when I'm done. And I also don't have to waste a, a bunch of extra cleaning medium when all I need is just enough to cover and clean my block here. So sound waves travel and they will travel through a Ziploc bag. Um, I've also seen small gas engine folks uh, even put parts in a jar 
and that way they have a lot less to waste and a lot less cleanup and that's always great because an 1859 sharps takes a little while to clean so we want to cut down on the amount of time that we have to commit as well as the amount of materials that we need to use so i have the heater going it's been working pretty good so far i haven't had it on for too long but it's also summertime so it's not like it has a whole lot of heavy lifting to do and I don't have the thermostat set particularly high. I just want something, you know, a little warm because I don't think I really need it for this particular application. You could put your little parts in the basket that comes with it, but I am just going to take my bag and dump it right in there. And I have 15 minutes set on my timer, it's arbitrary. I just thought 15 minutes would be a good amount of time and we should be able to see some results after that. And we have some other features. So we have normal, pulse, and degas. I think I'll do my 15 minutes on normal and do a few minutes of degassing towards the end. So I'm going to hit go and see what this ultrasonic cleaner does to our microphones because sometimes the sound waves can mess with technology just to tickle. So, so far it's going right to work. We have our countdown timer. We got our parts shaking and the hopefully the degreaser will be the right solvent to break down all the different pieces. Let me get you in here a little bit closer. Well, our timer is up. It's been 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and check our results. Here we go. It is a very dirty bag, a lot dirtier than when we started. So it is shaking stuff loose. We see all sorts of stuff suspended in the liquid. We see I see particulates of expended uh, burnt black powder residue. So I think we're making some really good progress. This is pretty exciting stuff. So why not keep the experiment going a little bit longer? So this super clean degreaser uh, still has life in it. So how about we put it back in the tank for maybe another 10 minutes on the degassing feature, which from what little I understand, it's supposed to really be an even more aggressive ultrasonic clean. So how about we go for round two? we're done. So all that I've done is taken the parts out of the bag and given, given them a quick rinse in the sink. So here is my block and I can tell when I was just at the sink how incredibly clean all of this came out. And just look at that. Look how it got everything off on the outside. And we'll get into the flash hole a little bit more. So there we go. Nice and clean. I'm really impressed that up here where the cone goes in, normally on an 1859 Sharps, you get a lot of caked on residue. And that all just came right off with no scrubbing. So that's the outside. Let's go ahead and get a little bit deeper. So I have a Q-tip. Now I'm kind of expecting, you know, some wiping because not every, you know, it's not like a washing machine, but wow. Check that out. So this is going in the cone. 
Now, I don't know how many of you have used Q-tips to clean your 1859 Sharps, but you can sometimes go through a pile of them. Let's go through the little clean out screw recess. Again, no scrubbing. Let's go all the way in here, same Q-tip. I can say, I, I don't know if it'll pick up, but there is a slight bit of discoloration, but like that is not bad for my first time using an ultrasonic cleaner, brand new, for this purpose. And do I know what settings to use? Nope, I took a wild guess along with you on my first time. Is a regular household degreaser the best cleaning medium for this application? No idea, but um, having, again, taken a wild guess at it, I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, let's see if I can go a little bit deeper, get under the cone. Yeah, I mean, the further in you go, you got more wiping to do, but when you go in here, like there's there's so much happening as far as fire and black powder goes. Like, you know, you should expect some wiping. But those of you who are experienced using ultrasonic cleaners for this sort of application, if you have a cleaning agent that you prefer to use, let everyone know in the comments. I think that'd be really valuable information. So here's the clean out screw. And this is just, I mean, spotless with just a rinse so that's a plus on that and let's check out the cone you should probably have a paper towel handy give it a wipe i mean that's really clean really clean i can i can see on the inside of the cone I mean, it's clean, it'll work absolutely fine. But again, if we're trying to be nitpicky here, um, I feel like there's maybe a little bit more cleaning. Yeah, see, but the cone gets a lot of filth. So I think some of this for cleaning the cone, I feel like this might come down to a cleaning agent issue um, or maybe like a, a pre-soak, pre-treatment sort of application, but other than that, like this, I'm, I couldn't be any happier with the results. And yeah, so yeah, the cone, which takes a lot of work um, and abuse when using reenacting, um, needs a little more scrubbing, but I think this would definitely save me on my regular firearm cleaning solvents and the amount of consumable items that I use to clean it. So that just saved me a bunch of time. Now, final thoughts. Does the average reenactor, homeowner, need an ultrasonic cleaner? No. Um, if you like gadgets and gizmos or you are inclined to look for opportunities to add new and exciting tools to your workshop, then yeah, this might be right up your alley. Is this the best ultrasonic cleaner for what I want to use it for? I don't know, probably, probably not. Um, it's a good size. I wanted to get something that I could use in different applications in my workshop. And this seemed about what I was willing to invest. I enjoyed the, the heating elements. Uh, the functionality was really good. And I felt like the instructions were really clear. But there are far superior ultrasonic cleaners out there. And like I said, I am by no means an expert. I'm just a guy who clicked a few buttons on the internet and ended up with a new toy in the workshop. Ultimately, I think what I really like about this is that it, it saves me on our most finite resource. And that is time. Usually after an event, I have just my 1859 to clean. But sometimes I have you know, maybe the target rifle or a, you know, a revolver to clean, which is pretty uncommon, but occasionally it gets used. Um, but when it comes to the 1859, I can take my block apart, stick it in here, and then while this is just making its noise and cleaning away, then I can work on the bore, I can work on the receiver, 
And then by the time I'm done with the rest of the rifle, this just needs a rinse, a wipe, and some lubrication, and I'm all back and ready to go, which I think is fantastic. I also think it would save a lot on sort of our sometimes expensive cleaning solvents that we use for firearms. Uh, it would definitely save on consumables like Q-tips and um, pipe cleaners, patches, paper towels, rags, whatever. And while not like a, a major financial um, investment for those things, it does add up. And it's always nice to not have to waste so much material when you can have a machine use science to clean your parts for you. I'm curious to know if you um, have an ultrasonic cleaner and you have tips and tricks that you'd like to share, please let us know down in the comments. We really hope this video has been uh, informative, maybe a little bit curious, it makes you think a little bit, but I really appreciate you joining me in the shop today. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll catch you on the next one.